All right. Well, welcome to um, this week's edition of the LTC Hangout. And uh, I am Pastor Andy, DeGuire Discipleship Pastor here at Living Truth Church. And I'm joined here by uh, Jennifer Williamson, our children's ministry director, and uh, our senior pastor and leader, Pastor Norm Sullivan. And um, tonight, uh, it's we're going to have, uh, I think, some good discussion as we talk about some things that are, uh, that are coming, coming back. Uh, but before we do that, Pastor Norm, uh, would you want to share with us how things have been going, what you saw from last Sunday, and just give us an update? Sure. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's great to be back with everybody. Uh, uh, this past Sunday uh, was great. Uh, we had another, you know, people are finding their way back. Uh, we certainly know that many of you still uh, have need and uh, to uh, maybe still be online and just uh, be cautious, extra cautious. So we're, we're glad to see those views and those clicks and that you're watching and that you're tuning in. And we love it when you comment to let us know you're there. Uh, don't think don't think lightly of that. We'd like to go back and check and see who was there, and and so uh, keep doing that. But but here on Sunday mornings, uh, if you haven't come to check it out yet, uh, we are. You know, we've got the sanctuary spaced out, the dining hall. We have got more and more. We're getting starting to get some overflow in the dining hall where people are actually using that. Mm -hmm. We did have coffee back Sunday. Uh, we had a way to <laughs> to do that. Uh, you know, and and preparedness. Uh, we still have overflow rooms in the other building uh, where you can watch d direct link. Uh, if you're having troubles with the online or in any way, then, then you can do that here and you won't have those problems. Um, and uh, so it's, it's good. It's good. We've had, uh, we've had, uh, we've had a lot of first time guests yeah. and second time guests. We've had some people that came pre COVID and, you know, inject us out and they made their way back. And so, uh, mm. you know, all that's, uh, it's been great. Uh, talked with uh, Jared the other day. Sound like East Milton. Uh, they had a, a great Sunday as well. Uh, they had they had almost 60 people there. Wow! And so that's uh, man, that's a great start uh, for the East Milton campus. And uh, just they're meeting uh, all kinds of folks. And I, I got a feeling if we're at, we don't know what any percentages mean, but if if their percentages are down because because of COVID, also. Uh, you know, as people become comfortable getting out, I, you know, they're gonna yeah. <laughs> they're gonna skyrocket pretty quick. Amen. So it's good. Yeah. Amen. That's good. That's good. So it is. Uh, it is good to see uh, some semblance of normalcy, if you will. Some uh, as people are um, beginning to make their way back. We already know Celebrate Recovery is already meeting here Monday nights at 6 p.m. here in the dining hall, and uh, if you're presently dealing with a hurt hang up or habit or or uh, or know someone that is that they could be uh, encouraged by that ministry it uh it meets on monday nights up here uh in our fresh hope uh ministry um would you speak again to that our what our fresh well, hope's about fresh hope, uh, fresh hope ministry is um our our church's effort to help in mental health wellness uh, we have uh, we have some uh, a small group of folks that are involved with that uh, currently, and they're they're meeting on Sundays at 4 p.m. I think this Sunday's Father's Day. That's right. So they're not going to meet, but they'll be back after that. Mm -hmm. They're meeting at our clubhouse over here, uh, and looking to move into one of the other rooms. But uh, currently, that's where we're moving, and so we're we're glad to have that option. Uh, you know, we started that. Uh, ooh, I don't know. It's, it's almost a couple of years now, maybe, oh, yeah. uh, because we believe the church needs to be involved with um, everything that, that our, our world is dealing with, especially even the mental health. Yeah, whole, so a holistic, and that is a, the exciting thing about the gospel is that it, it does transform us, spirit, soul, and body. We, we do believe that, so, and we're grateful for Jennifer Cox uh, leading out in that ministry. Hey, we're going to, uh, coming up at the end of the month, too, we're going to have something that we haven't had in a while in terms of our Connect class. Yeah, uh, the last Sunday of the month, uh, June 28th, we're having our uh, membership class, Connect class. And uh, so if we, we've got several people who have been waiting for that because we haven't had it in a couple of months. Uh, and so we'll, we'll have a, a lunch uh, after the third service, and uh, we'll meet with those that are uh Folks are coming in and joining up with Living Truth and uh, the ministry here. And, uh, in fact, if, if you're 
viewing right now um, and you want to be a part of that, uh, just click on one of the Connect cards there that pop up on the screen there and let us know that you would uh, like to sign up for the class. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And, and, and we would say membership matters, right? Um, membership lets us know you're in. You know, there's a difference between just showing up on Sunday mornings and then a membership really says, hey, I'm here, I'm committed, and I'm ready to jump in and serve, right? And uh, so that's important. We hope if, that if you've been coming, and of course with everything that's happened and you uh, have been meaning to, to jump in and get on the ship, so to speak, the discipleship, oh, did I just go there? The discipleship, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, okay, but yes, we hope that you'll um, sign up for that Connect class June the 28th. Small groups are coming back. I've sp spoken to a number of small group leaders this past week, and it's exciting to hear folks hungry to come back again and to get into the scriptures. And I'll even add that uh, our youth, this is our phase two of our youth ministry. Pastor Jeff has been on vacation this week, and so we wish him a relaxing time with his family. But um, youth, um, the way that they're be coming back on Wednesday nights, uh, middle school girls are meeting at the Dixon's home, and the middle school boys are at the Needles, while the high school girls are meeting at the A Bears and the high school boys at the Vandenberg. So, again, it's exciting to see even them start to come back and, um, and have that connection as well. Our D groups, discipleship groups, continuing to meet, right? Uh, which is exciting, which... This is all crescendoing up to something very important. And who better else to introduce that than our very own <laughs> children's ministry director. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Jennifer uh, Williamson. Yeah, so we're excited to announce that we are um, making current plans to reopen our kids' ministry from birth through fifth grade. I can uh, hear the roar of applause oh my goodness. From, the, from here. Okay, but what date? We are looking for July 12th will be our first Sunday back open, and you'll we'll have birth through fifth grade, like I mentioned. There's going to be some things that are going to look a little bit different to you guys, and we want you to be prepared for that, but we're going to do our best to make sure you're getting the proper communication to understand those things before they take place. So keep tuned into the Hangout. Keep tuned into emails that you get to our kids' Facebook page, to the church Facebook page. Stay connected with us because you're going to want to be reading these things and knowing what's coming up. Some of the things we're doing is we're adding another class to our, to our uh, nursery department. We're going to have smaller class sizes, which means um, we're going to need more volunteers. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to have to be asking one parent to drop off and one parent to pick up. We can't have the whole family come into the building anymore. We've got to limit how many people are in there, okay? Um, if you are not serving in the kids' building, if you're not picking up your child or dropping your child off, that means we just need you guys to wait, you know, either in the parking lot or wherever you're, you're waiting at. Um, we will continue to have check-in the same. So we're not changing that. I know before COVID, we were preparing for a self-check-in with our key tags, but we're going to hold off on that for a little bit just because, uh, you know, more sanitary issues with just having one person touching the iPads and things like that. So we're going to be careful with those measures. Uh, but you're going to hear a lot of this, um, this information coming out, and you're going to be able to read it and have it in a printable form so you can understand what's going on. Now, like I said, Smaller class sizes means we need more volunteers. We need more people to step up and help serve in our kids' department. So if you have a kid and uh, your child attends birth through fifth grade in the back, we want to encourage you. We need you during this time. We need you to step up. We're creating teams that serve once a month. So you may be asked to serve two services um, once a month or once every five weeks. Um, so it's not that bad. It's really a, a very good thing. You can still attend one and worship one, but then serve a couple for us, and it helps us out tremendously to make sure we can keep these smaller class sizes. Um, remembering, too, that just because you're serving doesn't mean you have to serve in your own kid's age group. Right. Uh, a lot of parents don't want to serve 
maybe in the same group your child is in because it can it can be distracted or it can be more difficult sometimes. It just depends on the parent, and, and we can work through that. That's what Megan and I and Lauren and I are here to help you guys do. We'll make sure that that's all taken care of. And if you say, hey, uh, even if you don't have a kid over there and you want to serve with kids, please uh, you know, connect with us. We're going to put a link either in the description or in the comments below for the connect card. And we need you to fill that card out and turn it into us, whether it's online or even if you come see us in person in the next week or two, we need to talk to you because we need to get the background checks forms filled out. We have things we have to do to make sure that your kids are safe. Our ultimate goal here is to keep your kids safe, but to make sure they're learning about Jesus. And we are so, so, so excited to be back with your children and to be back teaching them about the Word of God. And we appreciate, we do appreciate, I know, Pastor, you've done a great job with keeping it uh, in the services a little shorter and things like that for our kids. And you guys have done a great job in here. And we've tried to make sure we have the curriculum for the kids in the back. But to be able to teach them on their level and to be able to explain to them or when they have questions, for them to ask their small group leaders because our kids need that connection where it's on their level. And so we're really excited about that. And I can't wait July 12th, sign up to serve because we're gonna need you to serve. But um, if you want to also, I'm gonna say one last thing. On um, June 28th, when you have the membership class, we will be having a small meeting with those who are serving in the uh, first through fifth grade age level, uh, right after third service in the kids room. So if you say, hey, I want to know what this is more, I want to know more about this, I want to know what it's about, come see me, come to that meeting. And even if you say, hey, I don't want to serve with kids, but I want to help, we're going to need people to clean between services and those kind of things. So there are plenty of ways for you to help. We're all one body serving together. Yeah, yeah, let me, let me add to that. Uh, you know, some, I, I could hear some happy, I hear some clapping, and I hear some uh, looking at the calendar and thinking that's like still a couple weeks away. But what I want to address that is, is look, we, we've been blessed. Uh, we, have, we have great leaders like Jennifer, Megan, Lauren, all these, that, and the ones that they have serving with them, volunteering, yeah. that uh, have done a great job. We, we, have a, we have a pretty doggone good uh, kids' ministry here, all right? And so I, 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 can, I'm, I can say that because I'm not taking credit for it. We, we have that, all right? And so um, we want it to be where it needs to be, that level-wise, uh, when it comes, you know, when we when we get back. So uh, you heard Jennifer. Uh, she's more excited than she acted there, all right? So she's very excited. Uh, but um, but we're, you know, um, we do need, we will need different type volunteers. So that that's the thing. We're, we're spacing out some rooms, and uh, so we have adequate space, and then also, we'll need different type volunteers. It may be, like she said at the end there, I'm just reiterating that so people understand. If you're not uncomfortable with teaching or something, maybe we need you helping us clean in between. Uh, and it's for your safety and so we can get back together. So we can do it and we, we want to uh, do things properly. I guess that's all I was going to say about that. Yeah. And, and I would reiterate uh, what you said as well. I mean, some people might be watching tonight thinking, Oh, man, that's like four weeks away. Oh, why does it's it take so only, long? It's only three. Only three? Okay. It's only three. So it'll be here before you know it, but what we have to do is uh, it's going to give us some time, again, to adapt. We're going to have to move some, return some things to a semi-normal level in, uh, as we open back up some of the kids' building. Uh, we'll be transforming, as Jennifer said, one more room's going to become available for nursery. And uh, this thought came to me as, as Jennifer was just making her plea for volunteers is, you know what, I, I love the idea of teams serving once a month. You know what, that's only 12 times a year. It, I mean, to put it in perspective, you know, really. even less. Like in our first through fifth grade, we only serve once every five weeks. So our teams, sometimes there's a whole month that goes by before they serve again. But they come in ready to go and ready to teach these kids. And that's what we want. We want you guys to come and know that these kids are excited to see you as much as you, most of us are excited to see them, you know. Yeah. And, and we'll say, hey, how about this? Uh, so if, if you're like, oh, man, that's still a few weeks away. Uh, you know what? Go ahead and do the Living Truth Experiment. Bring your kids on up in here at least one time so you can see them at, at the big service. And uh, we'll call it an experiment. If it's a bad experiment, you know, you just call it an experiment. You know, bring them on in here. 
And uh, this will be that one time you can see how they handle that. We have continued to place the kids' curriculum, the printables, all in the dining hall uh, for pre preschool through fifth grade, as well as this Sunday, because this Sunday is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all of our awesome dads out there. Shout out to you guys. Um, we want you guys to know that we're still thinking about you, and we're still... Um, and, you know, we still want you guys to feel encouraged, too. So we're going to have a small packet that the kids can pick up in the back that's a little uh, craft for their fathers. And you guys can pick those up on your way. And they can do them even during service because they're just a quiet uh, coloring craft. We even provide the crayons. Everything's taken care of. Awesome. Yep. And I know that has been a blessing, I know, to many families. Uh, and it has, been, it has been fun, literally, to watch the little ones uh, here as well. But we are excited. And uh, we are a church that's eager and anticipated. I know perhaps for some of you, maybe that's been that's been the issue. Maybe it's not been uh, so much the, the health concern as like, I just don't know if I can be able to manage my kids. So we're going to have our, um, our background checked, secure environment. Uh, it's going to be ready for, for you to bring uh, those little ones back. So we look forward to that on July the 12th. So it's coming. Um, so We've really talked a lot in good measure. Oh, well, here's one one thing. As we as we come back in, we had a nice uh, surprise visit this week from the uh, Department of Health. You want to make a mention to that, and we give thanks for that. Sure. Uh, uh, Matt Dobson stopped by from the health department, and uh, they, they brought us some masks. Uh, so the uh, so we can have, uh, if you happen to show up on Sunday morning and you don't have a mask, we will have some of those available. Or if, or if you just need one, you've, you've been gone this time and you haven't had one, you need to have one. Uh, so when you're going to certain places, uh, you know, stop by the church office. Uh, we can hook you up with that. Uh, also, uh, while he was here, we had to ask him a few questions because, you know, I, I was, we hear so many different things and we don't know, you know, we just don't know. And uh, so I, I asked him about the, uh, you know, wearing the mask in public and such. And, and this is straight from the health department. The, the stance is, you know, if you're healthy, you really don't have to wear that mask. Um, if you're uncomfortable with things, sure, wear the mask. Uh, if you're, you know, more vulnerable or if you, or must, no, if you got something, the mask is for somebody that's sick or not feeling well. Okay, right. so, um, you know. Anyway, that was uh, one of the things. And then he said, as far as I asked him about children's church, getting all that back. And, you know, as you heard, I mean, there are some uh, churches that are starting to get that back. Hey, you know, there's some churches that haven't even met yet. Uh, you know, so uh, I'd say we're probably somewhere right in the middle uh, of all that. Uh, and so, uh, but, but I think um, going uh, for us to get back in, by July in, uh, you know, what he said, he said that we're, we're right on, and, and the way we're spreading out the space, he said we're right on. So I uh, just want you to know we, we, we've talked, been in communication uh, with the health department and all that, and um, so we're doing all that we can do. And, you know, and so we're to ask you, everybody just use common sense. Um, you know, we're, we're all learning. We're all learning. Yeah. Were you going to say? Okay. So up until then, we'll still continue to have our um, overflow area in the dining hall, uh, as well as across um, in the kids' building, um, and particularly for those who are um, immune-compromised or just have health concerns as well. Uh, and I'm still not sure that we've even utilized that space fully. Um, so we want you to know that until then, don't we say, please don't wait to come back until July 12, because we'd love to see you and worship with you. But just know that uh, July 12th will be our starting date back for that. So you can be getting geared up and excited, get your kids excited go for that. Go ahead and put that heart right down there. Just go ahead and click it. So we know you guys are ready to bring your kids back. Oh, yeah. We, we want, love to see it. Yeah, I we love see seeing how those. Kids are gonna be Absolutely. Be yep. Absolutely. Well, um, this is part our one of my favorite parts of the hangout that we get to talk about what God's been speaking to us about. And I'm grateful that we do have a God who speaks. He's not silent. He's given us his word. And that's the title of our, our series that we've really been walking through this year, Word, In It to Live It. And uh, so we'll just kind of open that up just to see um, what has God been saying to you guys uh, through our series so um, 
for me, I was reading yesterday. I had uh, started the next this week's plan and and was going through through my journey and. I kind of skimmed a little bit into chapter 4, even though it's not in our reading plan of 2 Kings, just because um, I just it just was drawn to me because it talks about the Shunammite woman who she was barren. She wanted to have kids, but she couldn't. Her husband was older, and she was very upset by this, and so she wanted a son. So she goes to you know the prophet, and she's like, I want this baby, and, and he gives her a word that she's going to have a kid. And um, she does. She has a son, and um, she gives birth, and her son dies. He's he's young, and he dies. And I was lo- I loved it because one of the things I've I've talked to people about is they're like, well, we're reading the Bible, but we're not reading the whole Bible um, in this year plan. It's an overview, like Pastor said. We're hitting some highlight points that I mean, the whole Bible should be highlighted. Because and if you ever look in mine, you'll be like, how do you know what's what? Because everything's underlined. But it's when I was reading this I remembered she had to go back to the point when her son passed away she carries him back to the point where she first got that promise she takes him back to his house and she says you know what are you going to do for him and then her faith is is kind of tested in ways in that she has to hold to it she can't let it go and she tells him she goes as the Lord lives and as you live, I'm not going to leave you. She wasn't going to leave till she got what she wanted. And then I was, of course, it just, I mean, you know who else said this was Elisha said that to Elijah. He said, as long as the Lord lives and as long as you live, I'm not leaving until I get this. And she had that same faith and that same hold to. And, you know, I want to encourage you. The Bible isn't something that we just, it's a one and done thing. It's a lifetime commitment of, of you letting it change you and grow you. Anytime I read the Bible, whether I've read the scripture before, it doesn't matter. It's something else changes in me, and it just it pulls something out of me. So I want to encourage you guys that as you're reading it, sometimes you got to go back. Sometimes you got to go back to that first place. And so don't look at this and go, oh, we're skipping chapters. We're skipping this. We're skipping that. Plan for next year. Plan for next year that you're going to go back and you're going to cover those chapters that you missed. Make that your personal goal. Set your own self some goals. Make a, make your reading plan for next year. Go ahead and start it right now. Just go ahead and make, write it out. Okay, next year I know I want to hit these these chapters and these books. Because the more you let God pour into you and the more that you go back to that first place, this is, this is a starting point. That's what I'm saying. This is your starting point. Word series is just a starting point for you guys and for all of us. And I hope that we don't stop there because we're six months in. That's, six months has gone pretty fast. The rest of this year is going to go fast. And I don't want us to, like, stop there and go, oh, okay, we did the, we did the plan. Okay, I'm done. No, you're not. That's your starting point. Now, next year, go back. Go back to your first promise. Hold tight to God and let him do in a work in you that he wants to do throughout your lifetime. That's right. Uh, yeah, I agree with that uh, wholeheartedly. Our desire as we were putting this together was not that we would read every single verse of every single chapter in the Scripture, but we really wanted to provide... Um, uh, the congregation as a whole, just sort of a, a 40,000 foot top down view of scripture, you know, and if you've been up an airplane looking down, you can see uh, formations and such, but you're not really able to necessarily dial into the details. Um, so again, we're just, we're overviewing it. And so we just encourage you to hang with us um, and continue to let God speak because these are Definitely some important stories, um, narratives of how God moved among his people. And uh, one of them specifically that that stood out to me, which is almost, I, I really didn't think I would have gotten stopped here, but it was over a wicked king, Ahab. And uh, uh, this past week, um, you know, Pastor Norm shared about that confrontation between um, Elijah and the prophets of Baal which all that came about under the um, administration of uh, King Ahab of the northern kingdom of Assyria. And uh, the Bible is definitely explicit about just saying he's a wicked king, more wicked than anyone else. And yet what struck me out of 1 Kings 21 was how when the prophet came and spoke the word 
uh, that basically said because of what he did to Naboth's vineyard and, and, and um, wrongly, well, he's listening to his wife Jezebel, um, that because of what had happened, he was going to die. And as a result of that, Ahab humbled himself. The Bible says that he, he humbled himself, he put on sackcloth, he laid in the sackcloth, he fasted. And um, because of that, God said, I'll hold off and not uh, bring this upon him in his lifetime. Um, and so it was, it was a, a good reminder to me that God does oppose the proud but gives grace to the humble. We see that in the New Testament as well. And a good reminder for us that if we would be willing to humble ourselves, going back to that Second Chronicles passage, humble ourselves and pray, seek His face, and turn from our wicked ways. Then God hears. Something happens, right? God, God takes us seriously like we ought to be taking Him seriously. Amen? So, so that, that has been a powerful one uh, for me. So, I love that Pastor made a good point Sunday. Like, what if they would have just stopped mm. and said, we're sorry. You know, we're, we've made a mistake. And God, I think what I took most away from, from the passage that he spoke on was, God wants to show us mercy. He longs to show us mercy. But we need to do our part and step up and go, God, we're sorry. We're coming before you just in love and adoration. And we, we have nothing to give you. That's my thing I always tell God. I'm like, I have nothing really to give you. I don't know why you use me or pick me. But thank you. You know, I'm just going to give you me. Just do what you want. And that's what God wants from us so he can show us his mercy. A good, our heart, yeah. Uh, this is one of my memory verses out of 1 Corinthians uh, this week. 1 Corinthians 4, 7, Paul writes to this church, For who regards you as superior, and what do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? 1 Corinthians 4, 7. And it's just a simple reminder that I was thinking about it as we sang that, uh, that worship song, uh, this past Sunday, it, it's your breath in our lungs. I mean, the very air that I'm breathing is a gift right. from the Lord. And so, um, who am I? I? All these things that I've, I have, it's because God has been gracious and kind. And that's a proper attitude, I think, to have. Which is also very timely given our our culture and everything that's going on in our culture right now. So... Pastor Norm, you want to share anything? Sure. Uh, you know, in the in the in our word series, we tie tie up that. Uh, you know, we're, we're glad that uh, you know. For me, it's it's good to see uh, the whole church giving an effort mm -hmm. to to be in the scriptures together. Um, and we want to encourage you once again. If you if you've fallen off, get back in. Um, you know, and like Jen, Jen said, you know, it's not a um, it's, it's, uh, you know, we get, folks are getting bog, bogged down and, uh, oh, did we read this extra? You know what? I was thinking as you said that we, people binge watch TV. Mm -hmm. uh, what if we mm -hmm. binge read the Bible? Right. You know, you can do that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can read extra if you want to read extra, but, but we really, this plan is really laid out to try to get everybody to stay with us. We're trying to get the whole posse to stay <laughs> together, you know. And uh, so if that's, uh, if you, that's you, if you've fallen off, just get, just get back in where we're at. Uh, if you're new to our church, you've just started coming, just pick up where we're at. You don't have to start back at Genesis unless you want to binge watch, you know. And if you, uh, so, but anywho, um, you know, uh, we, we, are in, uh, we are in some troubled times, you know, and things are going on. But, I, I, you know, I'm. I'm just so mixed. I'm so, uh, it's just, again, 2020 is the year of I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm trying to make my way through this, make some sense out of it. Um, but it was in my uh, quiet time uh, recently in Psalm 82. I was reading, and, you know, it's, it's I should read this and just tell you a little bit. how I, It just happened to be where I'm at, you know, and, I don't know when you read like that, if you're like, all right, God, what are you saying to me today? And, mm -hmm. and so um, the, uh, in Psalm 82, it's, it's entitled, 
unjust judgments rebuked. Mm-hmm. Huh, go figure it out. Uh, it reads like this. God, God, verse 1 says, God takes his stand in his own congregation. What's that? Uh, I'd say that means God comes ag- uh, amongst the my people. God takes his stand in his own congregation. He judges in the midst of the rulers. How long will you judge unjustly and how and show partiality to the wicked? That is, show bias, show prejudice. Uh, verse 3 says, Vindicate the weak and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and destitute. Rescue the weak and needy. Deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. That's little g, gods. And by that, he means rulers or judges. You can go back to Exodus 22, and I think maybe John 10, 34, Jesus talks about that. So he's not calling us gods. He's speaking of the rulers or judges or those who are in authority. Right. And he said about that, he says, and all of you are sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you will die like men. So that lets you know he's not talking about regards, it's not like Mormonism talks about. And fall like any one of the princes. And verse 8 says, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for it is you who possess all the nations. Wow. You know? Mm. Um, so as my habit you know, I was journaling from that, and some words I colored and an orange highlighted in the circle was, "How long? How long will you? Uh, how long will the just un- injustice go on?" And we see in this passage it speaks of God coming and God taking His stand against the judges or the rulers of the world. That is, the judges, those in power, they have. According to the Bible, they have judged unjustly and showed bias to the wicked. And the the call is to vindicate the weak and the fatherless, to step in. The call is for God to step in, uh, to do, do justice to the afflicted and the destitute, to rescue the weak and needy, to deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. There are many in our culture that have been marginalized, the abused, the orphan, the widow, the poor, the, and then there's the racism, the injustice, the aborted. And as I was getting into this and thinking, God, what do I do? What, what do I do? I'm already with whole racial reconciliation. I'm on board. I mean, shut up and listen. There's much I need to know, much I need to do better at. The scriptures tell us to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. And we've got brothers and sisters that are mourning right now. And I just couldn't help to notice what has happened with this pandemic because we're all trying to understand the pandemic also, right? But what is happening during this pandemic is it's making us, it's focus on little things that used to we might would have just overlooked. And I, I'm guilty. I'm just telling you where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to connect with folks that I didn't take the extra time to connect with, and I'm sorry if I, I should. I'm encouraging you to do the same. Your neighbors, friends, relatives, I mean, people that are in the neighborhood, people that do what you do at work. But the pandemic, I think, is forcing us to deal with things I'm concerned. I fear for those who have that where children are living in abusive homes right now, and when they can't go out, and their their cry cannot be heard. Mm. But I just wanted to make you know it because I, I I see some folks say some stupid things, but there's real things happening. I mean, uh, the folks. I mean. Um, We need racial reconciliation. Uh, We need to look out for the unborn. We we need to be a voice for those who are not being heard. And if you have a voice that's being heard, then that can be heard, then shut up and listen. And and you 
you step in for the ones that are being unheard. And I'm in the process right now, y'all. I, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one. I'm, I'm fearful even to open my mouth now because I don't know enough to speak. I don't really know what other people have been through. And so I'm in that process. So I'd encourage you to, get, to just shut up and listen, get in that process, um, you know, and, and, and um, because I'm told in the Scriptures to love my neighbor. I mean, in fact, Jesus in that whole, you know, thing with the Good Samaritan, you know, he, 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 uh, he shows who, who, the, who his neighbor is. His neighbor is people not like you. In fact, your neighbor is people that you might not normally like. And so we're commanded to love one another. I mean, if you're going to tell me you love God, but you don't love everybody else, don't tell me you love God. <laughs> I think somebody said that. Yeah. You know? Mm. You know, and then Jesus said, "I mean, how, how can you love? How can you love these people when you can't?" Well, to me, uh, again, going back, that's the good news of the gospel. The gospel is the power for reconciliation. Amen. That God was in the world, reconciling the world to Himself. Amen. Uh, as He who knew no sin became sin on our behalf, that we would become the righteousness of God, and because we've been made right. Um, with the Lord vertically, that does impact uh, the stewardship of our relationships uh, horizontally with other people. As we have been forgiven, we're commanded to forgive. We're commanded to let go. Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. And that's what I, I want to say to the folks that are in our congregation that, that might would listen would, would, would just be to, you know, Quit reading all the junk. Yes, there are folks on all these different sides that are saying and doing some crazy things. But I'm going to tell you, that most people are in the middle. Uh, you know, I, I I got to visit a little bit with some pastors the other day of, of another color, and and they, you know, they just, their hearts are hurting. My heart's hurting mm. for them, what they're going through. But they've been putting up with this for years. And uh, we go our merry way. And we're worried about, you know, when we're going to have children's church next or this or that. And, and uh, that's, you know, I, I, I'm just saying do the work. Take the time to get to know people. Uh, you know, see what's happened in the past. Uh, the situation blows, blows, you know, blows off. Uh, we, we sweep it under the rug and, mm. and no change. I, I'm just praying. I'm praying that real change happens. And I'm not saying today, right now, I'm saying I have much. I'm just saying my heart is hurt. It's, it's, it's cut. And I'm saying, God, any part of this that I own, I take it, I receive it, and I'm here to do better. And mm -hmm. that's all I want to encourage you to do. Don't, please, don't even act like you know what's going on. You don't. Um, I, I, none of us do. Mm -hmm. But let's get together. Let's talk. Let's, let's be reconciled. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're going to. You know, and I do, absolutely. The gospel is where the power is at. Yeah. That's right. right? And, and I, I feel like we don't see color, but there's obviously, it's obvious that we do, you know. And so I, I'm asking God to help me with that. And um, and and so I, I'm just, I don't know if we have anything else, but I want to pray for that. I want that I to be our prayer. I think that's good. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good right. way to sum it up today. John 13, 35 says that, you'll, that they will know that you are my people by your love one for another. Mm. That's right. You can't say you love people if you're not acting out. Love's a verb. That's right. That's right. Mm. Let's let's pray. Um, Father, I, I just we we cry out to you, Lord. We know that people have been uh, uh, done wrong in our world. All right. And and if the purpose of this pandemic, and I, I don't, I'm not God. I I don't know, is to help us to focus on things that. You've tried to get us to focus on in the past, but we find way, we're so smart, we find ways to sweep it under the rug. We move away from the problem or we cover it up. And yet there are people that are suffering, God. And I, I pray, Lord, that you would help us. Help us in this. Help us in loving one another. God, if I have sinned, my sins in this, Lord, point them out. And help me. 
see through your eyes what's going on. Uh, God, I pray that the church of Jesus Christ would be the ones that make the difference, God. If the church of Jesus Christ would do what it's supposed to do and love one another, share the gospel, go out boldly, make disciples that make disciples, replicate that, then other organizations wouldn't have to step in because those organizations, their motivation is not pure as the gospel. So help us, God, to step in and do what we're supposed to be doing. And right now, God, we just need you. We need your help. We need your education. We need you to help us. But all I can bring is a bowed heart before you, open hands, feet that are willing to go, and we ask for your divine push and guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, uh, we hope you'll um, continue to, to spread the word about kids' ministry coming July back 12th. soon. July, July 12th. July 12th. That's right. See you there. And make sure that you sign up um, on our online Connect card uh, for volunteers. And uh, we'll look forward to catching back with everybody next week.